Mr. Hershen spent uh, 21 years as the uh, very involved in the Missouri State Board of Education, and uh, that's one thing that he would look back in his uh, resume and his past and be maybe most proud of is has spent 21 years and is the current sitting president of the Missouri Board of Education. Uh, he's also the uh, a very avid cyclist and a fundraiser on behalf of the MS-150 bike tour. He's done it 21 years straight and uh, he's generated over 1.4 million dollars over the course of that 21 years and uh, he is currently the nation's number one highest cumulative fundraiser for the MS-150. And uh, in 2010, because of his service to MS-150, uh, he was named to the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame for the uh, cycling efforts. Peter and his brother Jack have uh, obviously been very instrumental in uh, creating this great entity and organization in the Springfield Branson area that we're uh, highlighting tonight as well. And it's clear that, that, that uh, because of the success of the organization that Peter has a very strong authority with which to speak about fire in the workplace. I think it would be hard to argue that they have uh, been one of the greatest examples and illustrations of, of, uh, of workplace and uh, faith coming together, faith and commerce in the same place. And uh, for that, they're to be recognized and, and applauded. They, uh, sorry here, shuffling between some decks, but uh, they've operated uh, uh, over 24 properties in nine states. Uh, their properties include sites in Branson, of course, the Silver Dollar City being the most, uh, I think, their flagship, celebrated its 50th uh, anniversary this past year. The Showboat Branson is another attraction, uh, Bell Lake, Whitewater Water Park, the Talking Rocks Cavern. Uh, they're also an operating partner with Dolly Parton and the Dollywood Company, which owns Dollywood Theme Park and Dollywood Splash Country. Uh, Peter is also... Uh, Served the organization over 20 years as executive vice president and uh, vice chairman and retired in 2006. Uh, Peter is also an accomplished uh, uh, trainer in tying ties, and Ben can attest to uh, how effective Peter is at, at helping uh, young individuals uh, equip, equip themselves in the art of tying ties. So thank you for illustrating your uh, astute ability. Peter, come on up and share with us tonight. We're grateful and excited to have you uh, in Kansas City. Ben. ben, where are you? Ben, Ben, stand up. Now, when I walked in tonight, um, you can sit down now, Ben. I just wanted to make sure everybody knew where you were. When I walked in, Ben and his mom were just coming in, and I could tell by the look at mom, mom's face that she was both in a hurry, that was part one, and part two had not the faintest idea how to tie a tie. And so there I was standing at the door uh, trying to tie my own tie, and uh, she said, oh, good, you can help Ben. And so Ben and I, uh, we tied his tie. And uh, you can compliment him tonight as you uh, see him a little bit later on on how well tied that tie is. Right, Ben? You got it. All right, very good. Now, every day, every day you should learn something. Isn't that true? I mean, a day is, without learning something, is a day without sunshine. I don't think that's the original quote, but it'll work. I learned today that Overland Park is not Shawnee, Kansas. <laughs> My computer, however, thought it was. And so I can tell you at 9,000 street address, 137th Street in Shawnee, uh, live Ralph and Mabel. <laughs> they don't know who you are, but they're very nice. It's just a ways away from here. The other thing I learned, of course, is that uh, rush hour in uh, Kansas City is really no different than Rush hour uh, anywhere. Rush hour in Branson uh, tends to be from about 9 o'clock in the morning until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That's when it's busiest, and I thought that's the way it would be here. And it's not. There are still people out there on that road, and some of them uh, are in a greater hurry than others. Uh, and then some of them uh, were having visits from 
uh, the Kansas uh, Highway Patrol uh, who were, well, they had been over watching out uh, for Kansas University in trouble on the campus there. Uh, but uh, they, they, heard, they heard that everything was okay here. Uh, poor Kansas. You don't have to apologize for graduating from Kansas. It's okay. It's all right. Isn't, isn't competition like that wonderful? I mean, it really, really is. Uh, we, we think of competition as uh, people who are bitterly, uh, I mean, really going at it head to head. Uh, there's competition in the church. There's competition between denominations. Sometimes it gets out of hand, absolutely. But on balance, when you look at what is going on in this room tonight, this is our competition, our collective competition. We are one company. We are Christ's company here. And we are here to be in competition with the forces of evil. And by the living God, we win, I guarantee you. <clears throat> uh, Rick and Kathy, when they were down in Branson, uh, what, about three months ago or so, we had a good, good conversation. We were, we were talking about um, we were talking about this evening, and we were talking about the business uh, of, uh, of our company, and we were talking about how Christ does live, how Christ can live in the workplace. And we were talking about how we do it in our company. Remember this. Hershen Family Entertainment, you might think of it, you, you would think of it as Silver Dollar City. That's perfectly okay. That's just, that's one part of, of the company. Uh, let me size the company for you. Uh, in a given year, we'll have about 10 million guests to our various properties. We operate in 10 states and 17 different properties around the country. And we have been blessed. We have absolutely been blessed uh, in good times and in difficult times. The Lord has had uh, a mighty hand and hopefully we have been smart enough to uh, accept that hand when, as, as he offers it. But people say to us, and they say, well, how, how does this all come about? You're, you're in the, we are in the entertainment business. We are not in the church business. We are not in the business of evangelism. Absolutely not. People come to Silver Dollar City, and if we have done our job right, they've had a good time, and they will come back. I would share with you, when I walked in tonight, I, was, I was, wasn't mic'd up or anything, and I don't know where this gentleman is, but a gentleman walked up to me and he said, here, I have this book for you. And uh, where are you? Raise your hand or stand up. There you are, back over there. Okay. Well, it's a, it's a picture book. And um, you wouldn't know the people in here, but Mike Woody, who has worked with, with us, uh, I've worked with Mike for 30 years sitting right here. Wave your hand, Mike. There we go. He would know all these people. This is a picture book of memories of Silver Dollar City. A very, very special. Very well done. Very well done. Professionally done. But if we've done our job at Silver Dollar City or at Dollywood or at Whitewater or Stone Mountain in Atlanta, Georgia. It doesn't make any difference. We have created a memory. We've, we've captured, just like those photographs have captured, we've captured 
a memory in your mind, and I'll, I'll come back to this, but as our mission statement, a little different than yours, Rick, and it's better only because it's shorter, it only has four words, and therefore I can remember it. But the mission of our company, and if we've done it right, then you come back. Our mission is to create memories worth repeating. We're in the business of creating memories worth repeating. And that's a, it's a wonderful gift that we get to do. But where did that come from? How, how, from what, are the, what are the roots? Uh, a little illustration. The ownership of the company, we're a privately held company. The ownership of the company is vested in uh, my family and my brother's family. And several years ago, we, we got together and we said, what do we, what do we really expect from our company? What, what do we expect the company to do? And three things became very apparent to us. Not in this order, but it's like a stool. This leg of the stool was the business side. These are not in order, by the way, in rank order of importance. This is the business side. We wanted a reasonable return on the investment. That's no different than any of you who are in business today. You look for a return on your invested capital or you, or you won't be in business long if you don't get that. That's one leg of the stool. But if you've ever seen a stool stand up on one leg, you know what will happen with this. If I let go, it will fall over. It doesn't work. So the ownership, the family said, the second leg of the stool is harder to get in. There. The second leg of the stool is the statement, we want the company, wherever we operate, to be a great place for great people to work. We don't want to be the biggest. That's not the ambition. But we want to be a great place for great people to work. And I will tell you, I am so proud of the men and women of our company. Uh, in, that, in that book of pictures, one of the pictures you got is of June Ward. She's the candy lady. If you've all been to the candy shop, at Silver Dollar City, you probably have met June. She's been there 44 years now. Mike has been with the company. He and I have worked together for 30 years. Every year we do a pinning for on five-year cycles, so five years, 10 years, 20 years. This last year, we had the, uh, uh, it was about what, four months ago or so, we did this year's pinning, and we had at least 10 men and women up on the 40-year cycle. That's two decades, two generations, decades, more than two decades. That's why I'm not in finance. <laughs> Back to the stool. Anybody want to guess what will happen to this stool? If I let go of it now, it will fall over. It cannot sustain. No matter how good these two legs are, it cannot sustain. So the third leg, Linda, this table is wonderful. She brought it up. The third leg. Each of these legs is vital to this stool standing up like that. The third leg, we wish to be a Christ-centered company. In what we do, 
that it will pass the screen of Christ's acceptability. If he were in the room, would he be pleased? Those three legs are what hold us up. You take out any one of those legs and we're out of here. We will fall apart. And I submit to you that that combination is a powerful one. I said earlier that we're not in the business of evangelism, and we're not. We're not in the business of church, and we're not. We're in the business of business. We are a business. And we will make a profit. And we will not apologize for doing exactly that. But what I hope and I pray that we do, and I hope and pray that we do it well and always, is to remember our, our present CEO. Car the, uh, you, you mentioned Carrie Summers. We've only had three CEOs outside of the family. Joel Manby is our sitting CEO now in nine years. Hardly a stronger Christian will you meet, unless it would be Carrie Summers, who was a strong and powerful Christian. All three of our outside CEOs have, have been powerful Christians. Joel when he speaks of the importance of the three legs of that stool and particularly the leg that says we want to be a Christ-centered company, Joel says it has to do with love. It has to do with love. Love as a verb. Love in action. And what in the world how do, how do you do that in a business setting? Men and women come to Silver Dollar City. I'll use Silver Dollar City as the example rather than generalizing to the company. About two million visitors a year in a normal year. This is not a normal year. Anybody? I suspect you already know that this is not a normal year. I just, but if, if that hadn't occurred to you, Come see me after the presentation. I'll, I will explain something. Two million visitors. And the, a, a, a significant plurality of them paid $55 plus tax to get in. So they have made an investment in hopefully having a good time, hopefully in creating a memory. How do, we, how do we express that love, the verb, back to them? I'm going to tell you a few stories that will, that will share exactly what I'm talking about. These are just stories I, I was thinking about at random as I drove up here this afternoon. This is a story from Dollywood. How do we share Christ at the heart? You don't do it with proclamations. You don't put a sign up that we're, you know, we're, we, we love Christ. It's about 9 o'clock at night. Parking lot's pretty well emptied out. Most of our staff has gone home. One of the me mechanics from the auto shop was driving back out through the parking lot on his way home. And he uh, observed a car sitting in the parking lot. And the trunk was up and the hood was up. Now that's a pretty good indication that they're not just loading in luggage. And four people were standing around staring at the car. 
And so he swung over, said, you folks okay? Can I help you? And he said, in effect, uh, I wasn't there, so I'm obviously paraphrasing, said, well, the car is sick. It won't start. And he said, huh. He said, and it is God's good coincidence. Uh, they, were, they were driving the same manufacturer of a car. I have no idea what the brand was. Doesn't make any difference. And so he said, okay. He said, huh, again. And he said, let me get in. And he tried the key. And sure enough, for all you gentlemen would know what the Bendix is on the starter. And uh, the Bendix was whirling and the starter was not. Which means the starter's broken. So he said, huh. And he said, don't go anywhere. Well, obviously, we're not going to go anywhere. <laughs> he jumps in his car, and the hood's still up, and the trunk's still up. He goes away. He comes back in about five minutes. And uh, he said, just let me, let me take care of it. He crawls under his car, takes his starter off, crawls under their car, takes their starter off, tosses it in the trunk, gets in, turns the key, and sure enough, the car starts. And these people, we didn't know this. We, we, no, no, he didn't go to management for approval. They probably would have said, you what? <laughs> he didn't. He didn't need to. He knew he didn't need to. He knew it was the right thing to do. Their car started. They said, well, what are you going to do? He said, my wife is coming down. She'll get me. I'll take your starter home, and I'll fix it and put it on my car. It'll be okay. And with that, they drove off. It wasn't until six weeks later that we found out that love was a verb just then. Perhaps one of the most poignant stories I, I know of in our, in our career happened at Stone Mountain, Georgia. How many of you have ever been to Stone Mountain? Okay, well, that's, that's a company operation. We lease it from the state, and um, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. All the ground maintenance there is done by state prisoners. There is actually a state prison, a small one, on grounds. And we deal with these state prisoners there. They're out and around all the time. They're painting fences and picking up. They don't, they don't run our operations. They do the peripheral uh, work around on the outside. First, when I heard that, I thought, that's just a little unusual, but perhaps it's OK. But more to the point, in the winter time in Stone Mountain, for three winter, it's three years now, we've done uh, uh, Snow Mountain. Snow Mountain. And we make, in Atlanta, Georgia, feet of snow. It averages about four feet deep. We, uh, I won't go into all the mechanics of it, but it takes a couple big machines to do that. And you would think in Georgia that it would melt in the noonday sun. It's amazing how well it holds up. Rain is your, is your greatest enemy. But we make feet and feet and feet and feet of snow. And then, then we have a dozen uh, slideways. Everybody comes down in inner tube. Calhouns, you'd love it. You know, you'd just love it. Comes down in inner tubes and uh, you know, in, in Atlanta, Georgia, a snow day is a very rare occurrence. Uh, they don't get out of school very often, although a heavy frost can certainly put them back. Two, uh, this was last year, not, not this winter, the winter before. There was a story that appeared in the Atlanta paper about uh, a girl, Ben, about your age, 
who had uh, a terminal leukemia. She was not going to, and, and matter of fact, did not live terribly long. Touching story, touching story. A, lived a mile or so from Stone Mountain. And in the paper, the story said her only wish, she'd lived in Atlanta all her life, her only wish was, I would just love to see a snowfall, see what it really looks like. I don't know who among our guys read that story, heard that story, but a, a dozen of the men and women who were working on making all that snow, they got a couple of our dump trucks and some front-loading front, front loading bobcats, and they took, it was in the range of 40 yards of snow over to that girl's front yard at night. Didn't even tell her parents until they got there. <laughs> but you've got to admit, that'd be a little stranger. We have this snow we want to make it, put in your front yard, but they picked up on the story fast enough and load it, and the front yard, the pictures, I, I'm, I apologize for not having the pictures, because they are, uh, they tell the story better than, certainly better than I'm doing. But the pictures tell the story, and here came, here came this young girl in her dad's arms, and uh, the, the, the chemo had been doing its job, the hair was gone, and she looked out, and uh, I tend to cry when I tell this story. Oh, you just have to live with that. <clears throat> she, she looked out, and for the first time in her life, she saw a yard, a good-sized yard, like, like this area right in here, three feet deep in snow, her whole front yard. Love is a verb. That was God's love in action, I assure you. It isn't always big things that, that make the difference. Sometimes it's small ones. There was a fellow who worked for us by the name of Luke Stanley. Mike knows the story I'm going to tell. Luke, um, well, when he was, wor he worked for us for 18 years before he went home to the Lord. And that was his third, if he'd made it for 20, that would have been his third 20-year career. So Luke was up there in years and Luke, uh, Luke had a heart, had a heart for children like you have never, never seen. 